Hi everybody, welcome back to Jason Morgan Wildlife Art. On this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint a real complex elephant's trunk. So there's lots of wrinkles and indentations and creases to, to cope with. And to, to paint something this complex I've simplified it by first I'm going to paint a real mid-tone over the whole canvas, over the small canvas, and only then am I going to come in with the darks and then the lights. So the mid-tone is going to act as a, a real easy base to build upon. Now I'm going to do the mid-tone in acrylic paints, and you can see I'm at the top and there's just ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and some white. And then I'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer before I start painting with my oils. So I'm going to start by making up a nice warm grey, ultramarine blue, acrylic paint at this stage, burnt umber, make sure it's thoroughly mixed and then I'm going to add some white just to make it more of a mid-tone and from this I can add a bit more blue to make it bluer or burnt sienna if I want to make it warmer but it gives me a nice mid-tone grey so I'm going to make up plenty of this colour because I'm going to use it to cover almost all of the canvas just wiping the brush off and then I'm just going to scrub this in roughly. Now if I was painting this elephant a smaller scale, obviously I'd just use smaller brushes and a larger scale would be larger brushes. But this technique really speeds up this process and simplifies it a lot. Now I'm adding some burnt sienna just to warm that colour up. A little bit more white just to lighten it. And the good thing about elephants, they're real opaque um, colours. So a painting covers the canvas really well and therefore it, it grows without too many layers. So I'm just painting in the warmer colour of the elephant's body. Still scrubbing that paint in. And you can see how I'm using the brush strokes as well to actually mirror where the, the wrinkles and creases are, even at this stage. And this is just giving me a nice little map to follow. And because it's acrylics, it's going to dry straight away. And now with that dry, I'm going to transfer my drawing using a white transfer paper. So where it's normally grey, a graphite grey, this transfer paper is white and on the one side is a creamy paper and on the other side is, is whiter and the whiter side is a transfer side. So I just place that underneath and I've got my tracing on top because this is such a complex shape I'm, I'm tracing this one and I'm just going over with a hard pencil and this is going to give me white marks underneath. Where you'd normally have grey for the graphite transfer paper, this will give me a nice white mark that's really easy to see. Because it's so easy when you're drawing something like these wrinkles to get lost in amongst them um, and, and actually forget where you are on the canvas. So I've just continued that over the old tracing and you can see it's given me a nice, a nice uh, area to follow. So I've sealed that then with a coat of spray, permanent, pastel and pencil fi fixative. And I'm all ready to go now with my oils. So from top I've got white, black, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, academium orange, naples yellow. And down at the bottom I've got another black and another white. And they're just there to be kept pure colours. So to start with I'm mixing up my darkest dark. So the darkest part of the in between the creases, the recesses at this moment. And I'm going to use that mid-tone I've got over the canvas to my advantage. So I'm going to paint on the darks first and then I'm going to paint the lights. And you'll see how I'll get a real um, three-dimensional look to it within just 10 or 15 minutes. Obviously the other alternative would have been to have painted it a, a small section at the time. But then I, I've always got really lost in between the creases and 
and uh, indentations and it's difficult to follow it it's, it's like following a, a massive jigsaw puzzle this way is much easier so what I'm doing now is mixing up just a few different types of greys I'm making them lighter by adding white as I'm going down if I want them richer or warmer I'll add the burnt siennas but I'm just giving myself a nice selection of greys so that I haven't got to keep mixing and doing that all the way through and then I'll mix these together to make different hues and colours so you can see I'm just adding white all the time just to make them lighter and the body section under the tusk is much warmer there's a warmer light actually on that area so I'm using the orange and the uh, burnt sienna and colors like that to make a nice warmth and that makes the, the tusk and the trunk come forward in the painting the tusk has also got some nice bounced light underneath where the, where the sunlight has hit the probably yellowy grasses and the warm colour is then bounced up and bounced onto the underside of the tusk and it's things, catching things like that that really adds a lot of realism to the painting as well so it's obviously a good idea to really look out for that type of thing in the reference photo and try to include it in the painting okay I've cleaned my brush I'm just using a standard flat brush loaded with black paint and I'm just going to look at my reference photo and then look for where the darkest recesses are so that's the darkest part of the creases and I'm going to just put those in quite accurately it'll all be adjusted at a different stage at the later stages but I want to try and with this stage really get the feeling of where these recesses are and so do I'm going to watch me laboriously painting all these creases and highlights I will be using some speeded up camera work so you can still see the brush strokes but you haven't got to sit through it and there's the reference photo I'm working from so you can see how I'm studying it looking for the darkest areas and you can also see now how that mid-tone is really helping me much much easier than painting over a white canvas I'm just searching out the darkest darks the oil paint I'm using is Alkid oil so that dries by the next morning if you wanted to do another layer so I'm just blocking in all those darks and then with those blocked in I make up a real nice light colour it won't be a pure white yet because I'm going to reserve those till last but it's quite light all the same and at this stage I'm going to really go for the highest highlights and let that mid-tone do its work so still using a flat brush loaded with quite thick paint if it needed thinning down at all I've just used a little tiny bit of odorless paint thinners and you can see how I'm looking at that reference and searching out those highlights and it doesn't matter if they put in a little bit too thick or not quite the right shape nobody else is going to see the reference except me so you don't have to laboriously follow every single crease but I find getting the general direction and the general shape is really good enough so another little highlight along this section just double checking before I actually put the paint down even with all my lines these initial few sections can really be quite complicated to get right
and this is speeded up around about 10 times just for you to know so this small section well the whole painting is generally going to take me about an hour hour and a quarter to do now with those highlights placed in and the darkest darks I'm now refining the midtones so I'm using my middle tone grey that I made up earlier and I'm just putting in the sections of the bumpy skin now of the elephant and you see how quickly this will grow now I've got that lovely mid-tone acrylic grey underpainting Now if I was going to really refine this painting a lot, I would then probably paint this section for about an hour, really get the underpainting looking quite realistic. Then I'd allow it to dry till the next day and come in with glazes and things like that. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm, I'm going to use a brushwork and leave it quite loose in style. So you can see here how I'm just filling in that refined mid-tone, so slightly lighter than the mid-tone. And just a few dabs of paint here and there, really giving the elephant's trunk some shape and form. And with that mid-tone painted in, the grey, I've made up a warm colour and I'm creating some of that bounced light on the side of the trunk and also on the body using my brush strokes in the form and in the position of the recesses and creases. And it's important to actually use probably the largest brush you can get away with at each section because that, that keeps the brush strokes looser and the painting will look much more painterly and, and less um, rigid in the end. Okay, so everything's pretty much up to the same level of completion. It's all about halfway through. So I'm really going back in now and creating some more darks. And I'm going to re-establish those darks. Then I'll re-establish the whites and then the mid-tones again. So I'm making up a nice dark again. I've made it a little bit warmer this time by putting in a little bit more burnt umber. Just carefully searching out those sections that require the dark. This is the area that I'm, I'm refining the paint in now. So the first stage really give me the, the actual positioning of the major components, the major creases. And now I'm looking for more of those minor ones. More of the detail. And with a careful touch as well, even though all the paint is wet, I can still blend and actually use these darks kind of like a glaze. So I'm creating more shape and form on this side of the painting just by lightly brushing dark paint on there. Now this would be even easier to do with a glaze, so as I said earlier I could have let this painting dry at this stage just overnight and then created a glaze using the same colours and I could have thinned it down then with something like liquid or an alkyd medium and just brushed it over quite lightly.
And this is just knocking those recessed areas backwards in the painting by making them slightly darker. A little bit in there that makes that push back a little bit more because I know I'm going to come back in with more highlights later on. So it's better to be a little bit too dark at this stage rather than too light. And as the painting is wet as I've said I can use this to my advantage and actually smudge areas and, and blend them as well so I'm joining the mid-tones and the darks and the mid-tones and the lights together a little bit just softening the edges This section needs to go a little bit darker as well. And just over this top section. Just blend in lightly as I'm going along. You can see how I've always adjusted those base colors that I've made. So once again, re-establishing that real dark. Because I've smudged the areas, the darks have been lost a little bit. So by repainting them it's going to add more contrast. And I'll go over the whole trunk again in this manner. You can see already I was really given a, a three dimensional look to it. Now I'm pushing those darks right in again. Okay, so it's all been darkened, and now once again I'll come back with some more mid-tones. The old technique is really a, a case of make it, break it, and then you make it again. It's, it's real layering, even when I'm painting a la prima, I say I'm here. So all in one session, wet and wet. But obviously with each stage, I'm building on a better base so I'm building on a more refined base and I'm re therefore finding it much easier to refine the next stage so I'm creating a painting that gets more accurate all the time and it's obviously dependent on what type of painting you want whether it's uh, hyper realism so if it was I would keep painting it over a layer over a layer and allow layers to dry as well or a softer more painterly approach where it is painted all in one session and you can stop as and when you feel that, that, that that's the painting you were actually after that's what you wanted to create here you can see I'm just using the angle of the brush to put in dabs of paint here and there and that's giving the illusion and the impression of these small lumps and ripples and bumps in the trunk. OK, 
Okay, coming back in with some mid tones on this section. I want to really elaborate on the the creases. I also want to get in that bit of bounce light as well. and then back in with the highlights gradually getting lighter and lighter as the, the painting is coming closer to completion The highlighted creases of the body make that tusk because it's a bit darker and warmer come forward in the painting. Using the brush strokes to curve around the tusk just to give some texture, added interest. Nice thick paint, almost pure paint straight from the tube. Just warming that colour up just slightly with a little bit of burnt sienna. Being more careful with my brush strokes now as well. As the highlights go on it makes the darker areas and the recesses seem that much deeper and darker. Re-establishing some darks again. And just using the brush to blend the edge of the highlight.
using a small round brush now just to put in some detail in just where that flat brush is not quite accurate enough and then once that area is done straight back to the larger brush And now these final stages is really a, a stage of refinement. As I said, I, I wanted to keep this particular demonstration fairly loose. So I'm leaving the, the brush brush marks there and I'm not doing any glazing on, on anything like that. I just wanted a painting that looked realistic when you step back three or four paces and look at it. Not one that you can really almost touch your nose to the canvas and it looks like a photograph. I really wanted this to, to have a painty, painterly appearance to it. And after about an hour, hour and a half in total painting, that includes the acrylic underpainting, I think you'll agree that this technique is really fairly fast and it's much faster and much much easier than painting on a white canvas. And of course because that grey undertone was there helping all along I've used very very little paint as well. I, I could have put out probably a tenth of the paint that I've actually did squirt out the tubes and that's because the paint is so opaque the colors I've used are so opaque and the acrylic underpainting acted as a great base which is you can actually see in in various areas here and there okay I don't think I'm going to do too much more to it I could keep fiddling and refining this for for hours if I wanted to but it comes a point where, where you've got to think is that what I wanted to complete on this painting at this stage and I think this is it. So just a few more details here and there, a little bit of blending and I'm, I'm going to call this little study finished. Hope you've enjoyed my video. If so, you may like to subscribe. That way you'll never miss out on any of my new videos. There's also loads of tutorials, full length videos, demonstrations over on my website jasonmorgan.co.uk. See you all again soon.